Today we're going to talk about the Discovery Platform. The first thing we're going to do is jump into our administration. Right now I am logged in as a librarian, so you'll notice here when I hit my menu, I can see a link for Aspen Discovery. When I click on that, that will take me into the administration portal for my Aspen Discovery interface. Now these permissions are granted by users. So you'll notice right over here under system administration, I have administrative users and I have permissions. So you can define each role in a system and what each staff member can do. So you can pick and choose which modules they have access to and can define that information. We're going to start with adjusting branding and custom content and you're going to see that under your themes and layouts so themes allows us to define colors fonts images all within aspen discovery now you can have each one of these set for your local system so each individual library can have their own unique branding where you can bring in those logos and color schemes um, or you can create a template and then each library can use that template and if they decide to do their own branding then they can do that option as well so it's very flexible for consortiums and large systems to define that information. So let's take a look at our default, which in, in this case is our template. This is where I can come in and this gives me the opportunity to upload any images. So I can upload my logo, my favicon, favicons are what shows in your browser tabs. And then as I scroll down below, you'll notice I can also upload my Aspen Lita image, um, which would be my app. Now, as I scroll down, you're going to see things where you can define colors either by the hex value or by the RGB um, value in there. Over on the right hand side, you're going to see the option for contrast ratio. This is going to show your user the accessibility to make sure that it's either accessible, which means it'll be in green. If it's not accessible, it will be red alerting the staff member that they'll need to adjust that information. And as I scroll here, through here, you're going to see each section that you can customize within it. There'll be a question mark next to each one that will define what that value is. You can upload footer images and colors and text, um, as well as your own custom heading font, um, font body, and then of course, any additional CSS. Now this is optional, but you can bring that information in and you can make that as large as needed uh, to make those adjustments. As we scroll down, you're also going to see things like um, menu buttons that you can customize, boxes, categories, browse categories can be unique uh, for each of the locations within the system. And then as I, of course, scroll down below, you're going to see um, libraries and locations. This is where you're going to define who has access to this template or this particular value. So again, this gives you the option where you can make um, branding for each individual library, or you can apply a template to individual libraries in the system. And you'll see that here, we're applying those to several of them. Once you've made your changes, um, you can save the changes and return back to the menu or save the changes and return. Now let's look at the option for adding electronic resources. So if we come back to our administrative home, this is going to show you all of the modules that are turned on in our system. So for some of our larger providers like Cloud Library, Hoopla, Access 360, EBSCO, Overdrive, you can come in here and define the connection of information between Overdrive and Aspen Discovery. So I would come into my settings and then I would make that adjustment um, for my library. And again, these are going to be things that um, during your implementation process, we will go through with your library so we can set that information up. Now this can also be scoped to individual branches. So let's say for example, one library within the larger um, consortium or library system does not have Hoopla. You can actually come in and define Hoopla just for that location. Um, so that allows you to give some um, options to the members in your consortia or library system so you can define that information. Now, if one of the larger e-content providers um, that you may have was not listed as one of those individuals, you can do what we refer to as side loading. Side loading actually allows you to come in and define connections to a particular provider, Canopy, 
is a great example that we'll show today. And what this allows me to do is instead of going into my ILS, I can actually bring that e-content collection directly in here. You know, lynda.com um, is another great example that some of our libraries do. So this allows me to come in, I set up the name, um, I can set the path of where those will um, mark records will be brought into, I can define my encoding, um, and then of course down at the bottom you can see that information and where um, we've brought it into the system. So I can even define that item information um, if necessary, and then I can define when those were brought into the system. So that allows you to bring in any type of electronic records within the system um, of that management, and then you also have a dashboard um, where you can view that information as well. So active users, records that have been accessed online, you'll see that across the board for also all of those other e-content providers. So if we come over to OverDrive and we look at the dashboard, we can see that information as well. The next thing we'll take a look at is adjusting the settings for ferberization. So we're going to come back up and over here on the menu, we're going to focus on catalog and grouped works. So there's a few different pieces of the puzzle here that tie into your ferberization. So you have your grouped work display. This allows you to define how they're going to display together. Now Aspen will come set up with a couple default values for you. So public, consortia, school libraries, and then you can actually build or customize your own. Again, we'll walk through that during the implementation process with you. Let's come in here and look at our public library values as an example. So if I come in here and I edit that, this is going to show me how I can um, apply this to um, what the user sees. So um, showing quick copies of the items that are available, showing them series or publisher information. You'll notice I can check off what I want to show in that grouped display. As we come down to the bottom, then we can also see the search facets, so we can define that information. And then, of course, ending it at the bottom with your catalog enrichment. You know, do you want to show things like Syndetics or Content Cafe if you have that? Similar titles, enabling ratings and reviews. And then down at the bottom, we're going to have our full record display. That's going to allow us to define, you know, do we want things like our um, subject headings to show? Um, again, published, formats, editions, all of that information can be defined as part of setting up that grouped work display. And then you'll notice at the bottom, again, we're going to select libraries that this value applies to. So you can either select all libraries or if you want to do individual or a group of libraries, you can absolutely do that. Once you have your grouped work displays, you can also define that for the facets. And that allows you to come in. Again, we'll do a quick example here for public. You can actually come in here and then define that values. That will be your grouped works um, facets. So on the left-hand side, when your users are looking at that, they can come in. You can select the order. You'll notice there's arrows over here on the left, so you can move those up and down. You can actually change what the display name is. So we might know it as form, but we're showing it to the patron as fiction and nonfiction. So again, we want to make it as easy as possible so that the user understands what they're looking for. So you have that control as well. And then of course, as we scroll over, you have options to make things default, collapse or open, multi-select as well. Now, let's talk about our um, grouping of the records itself. So when the initial grouping takes place, Aspen Discovery will attempt to group together all of the records in your system, looking at, of course, the author and title, and it'll bring those together. So let's do a quick search um, in the system, and we're, I'm going to show you a few things as I'm logged in as a librarian. What you'll see here is when I'm looking at that particular record, you'll notice that underneath, now that I'm logged in as a librarian, we see this group with. This would actually allow me to group together with another title in the system. So if I think that it missed something, I can actually come in here and manually group it. So that is one way for you to do that by selecting that group and then saving it in the system. Now, the other way for you to do that is if we go back into administration and we come back down to our cataloging and grouped works, you have your records not to group. So if you found something that you did not want grouped in the system, you could actually come in here and then select the record ID. You can add any type of notes and then save that.
So this is just another way that gives you the control to come in here and either manually group them or ungroup them. And you can actually do that for authorities as well. What you're looking at here is all of the authorities that we have in our system. We can actually come in and view that information, make changes um, to it, and save that information in there. So this is a really nice way. Um, you'll notice here, alternate author. You know, if they have a pseudoname, you can come in, add that information in, um, and update that in the system. Next, let's take a look at adjusting the settings for relevancy and content source priority. Now from the left-hand side over here, we're gonna use our menu and we're gonna go down to ILS integration. Under your indexing profiles, you can actually come in and we're going to edit the relevancy and format information. So once that opens up, we can actually scroll down um, and define the format information. Um, so this allows us to view the values. So these would match your format and item information within the system. You can actually see the value and the format name, and then you'll notice there's something called format boost. And what that allows you to do is you can actually boost from a low to a very high value or set no boosting at all. We had a great um, question come in and, and somebody asked in a very large system, they said, we have a lot of our electronic resources that are showing up at the top, but we want some of our newer books to show up in, in physical format. So what we showed them, what they could do is come in here, they could find their particular value. So let's say it was new book. Um, they could come in here and then they could boost that particular format and maybe say very high and then that would push that information up so this is one way that manually you can control that information um, in the system uh, and boost your content source uh, for priority and and use that for relevancy the next thing we'll talk about is your information for your um, special features so if you want to put things in like placards or um, browse categories um, or even collection spotlights which allow you to basically take a, a, a carousel of items um, or advertise maybe events that are going on at the library. This is the way you can do that. So you'll notice under local enrichment, if I come over here to placards, placards allow me to highlight information in the system. So we'll use brain fuse as an example. If I come over here, you'll notice this allows me to essentially highlight something or advertise um, a program or something that we have going on in the system. So right now I'm saying, um, are you looking for homework help? Um, Brain Fuse offers live tutors from one to 10 uh, daily, and we've created this little image. Now, if this was an event, I can actually hit a start and end date. That way Aspen would automatically set this up. I can also add in my own text and CSS. This is all customizable. So you can upload your own image or create one in the system. As you notice down below, it links directly out to a link that you provide, and then you have triggers. Triggers are words that you anticipate the patron would search for and where you want this placard to populate. So this is a nice way that you can set that information up. You can add as many trigger words as you want. And then of course, down below, you can apply it to either all libraries in your system or two specific ones. So if this is an event that might be going on at just one of your locations, you can absolutely do that. The next thing we'll talk about is your collection spotlights. Now this is a fantastic way for you to actually come in and create something on another either um, page in Aspen Discovery or maybe your website or even your Koha staff client. So you'll see we have all different types of one here. And if we look at, let's say, ebook collection. What this allows me to do is actually come in and I can build um, essentially that, that cover flow or a carousel that populates within the system. And I can attach that to a list or covers um, right within the system. And I'm going to show you an example of what that looks like. If we come over to our Koha staff interface, you'll see one right down here below. And what this is doing is this is bringing in a, a carousel of different books. It's our top 50 hold requests in the system um, that they can easily link out to. And you can do this for anything in the system. And it's just a really nice way for you to embed that information so it's visible to all users. 
The other thing you'll see in your local enrichment is going to be your browse categories. And again, this is a really nice way for you to advertise or curate things right within the system. And these could be anything from a search or a list that you create. So if we take a look here, um, let's look at our um, autobiographies. If I come in here, you'll see again, these can be customized where you can share a description. They have start and end dates if applicable. If not, you can leave them blank. And then of course, as we scroll down below, you can also set the values of where they are visible at um, in the system. Um, and, and again, put in any type of description. And then of course, you have those browse category groups where you can actually define them in different areas. So you can see here, we have one for a bookmobile that only shows on the bookmobile um, site for Aspen Discovery.